Hi, it's Ben here from 247 Me. I've got the hands-on review of the new Mi Pad 4. I managed to get the black one here. And let's uh, take a look around it first of all uh, to see the different sides. Now here on the front we have a new 8 inch screen, smaller bezel around the side. It's actually 9.4% smaller than the Mi Pad 3 with a bigger screen. On the side uh, we have the usual volume rocker and the power button underneath on the right hand side. On the bottom we have two speaker grills, we have a microphone hole and a USB-C connector. On the left hand side we have a SIM card tray. Please note that the storage is not expandable, this is just for a SIM card. On the top we have a headphone jack, another microphone hole uh, on the top of the device. Over at the back we can see we now have a 13 megapixel camera here, much bigger than the Mi Pad 3. Uh, bigger aperture, so this should produce better photos, and also the LT band here if you have the LT version. So this is a, a matte finish, it is a metal chassis, so it does feel really nice, it feels comfortable to hold, it doesn't feel plasticky, uh, it feels really solid. Um, so, overall, the build quality is something I'm impressed with. So, let's uh, turn it on and then see what it's like to use. Just while it's turning on, I thought I'd let you know that it does come in two different colours. It comes in this uh, matte black and it also comes in a pink, like a rose gold sort of finish. Uh, they both look nice, uh, but uh, I do like the black front with the black back. It does look really sleek. It looks like a piece of slate and it feels really uh, comfortable to hold. Now here we go, so we've turned it on. We we'll notice straight away that there are curved edges on each of the four corners of the screen. A nice little touch. Um, you definitely notice less bezels, uh, the bezels do look smaller. I am impressed at the size of the screen to the um, body uh, for such a, a cheap device, they've done a really good job here. Straight away you notice the screen is nice and bright, standard uh, MIUI interface here. It looks plenty bright enough, it's bright in here, um, but it's, yeah, it's, it's not a problem, uh, even though it is on full brightness. Nip into the settings, we can have a look at what the different specs are here. So you notice it's running a Snapdragon 660 CPU, it's running at 2.2 gigahertz. It has a 6,000 milliamp hour battery, um, and the screen is an 8 inch, and this is running at 1080p resolution with 3 gig of RAM, and this one has 32 gig of storage. It's running MIUI 9.6, uh, not currently updatable. Uh, it's expected that this will get MIUI 10 uh, when this becomes available. On the settings here, you can choose between full screen mode or buttons at the bottom, as you can see here. I personally prefer the full screen gestures. Um, I like the Xiaomi gestures, simple to use, swiping up brings up the already open apps, and the swiping fully up goes up to the home screen. Like I said, it is run on full brightness at the moment because it is bright in here. Um, it should be plenty bright enough in direct sunlight. I don't know what this should be like, but people don't generally use their tablets in uh, direct sunlight. Let's check the viewing angles to see what these are like. Uh, so if we look around here, um, the test here, we can see the viewing angles aren't too bad for the LCD screen. Uh, hard to see with the reflection. It is a very reflective glass coating on the top, so there is no anti-reflective here. Um, but uh, overall, the viewing angles are good. The colours are nice and clear, uh, I've noticed from using it. Let's take a quick look at the camera now. Um, now this is a 13 megapixel camera. There are no extra settings, nothing like portrait mode that are built in. This is just a, a standard camera. Um, but overall, I think it performs very well. Um, just a single camera setup. We go and we zoom in, it's plenty clear enough. Uh, not bad for a tablet um, and a single camera setup. Yeah, overall, the camera's uh, perfectly decent. On the front, we do have a five megapixel front facing camera also built in on there. Now it does have multitasking built into this uh, version of MIUI. Uh, so you notice if you split screen and you can drag items in here and then open them up side by side. And this is where you notice the Snapdragon 660 chip working really well. It, it doesn't feel uh, like it's laggy at all. It's very quick, very responsive if you quickly swap between the two sides. Um, so yeah, overall the multitasking works very well. I'm eager to try this with different PDFs and maybe uh, videos to see how this performs. But on first impression, this is very good. One thing I have noticed, if you go back to the home screen, then if you try and bring back split screen by using this bar here, it could be the software is a little buggy, it does struggle to bring it back. I have to put it back into portrait mode to be able to see this bar, to select it, and then to go back into split screen mode. But you can see the split screen does work in portrait mode and in landscape mode, it does work very well. 
So my first impression with the Mi Pad 4 that it is a big improvement over the Mi Pad 3. It feels very snappy, I like that they've used the Snapdragon 660 chip, it feels plenty fast enough. The screen uh, is a, a nice layout, a nice ratio with 16 by 10. It comes in three different storage capacities, a 3 with 32, a 4 with 64 and a 4 with 64 LTE version. Now this is currently only available in China, it's not an international release. So if you do want to get your hands on this, then the best place is through Gearbest. You can follow the link in the description. Also don't forget to subscribe so you get the latest Xiaomi videos. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. Thanks very much for watching.